What's up guys, it's Holly from History Profiles and today's video will be on one of the most mysterious men in history, the Count of Saint Germain. He was noted to speak many languages, he was an expert of the violin and many other musical instruments, he was also said to study alchemy, science and the arts. First hand accounts of people that met him several times throughout their life said that he never aged a day people throughout the ages have called him the man that knows everything, the wonder man and the man that does not die. Let's get into the video. The Count of Saint Germain's real name is unknown, his background is also obscure as we know nothing about his birth or childhood. There are many possibilities of the origins of the Count of Saint Germain, one being that he was the son of Prince Francis Racosi of Transylvania. This would account for his wealth and fine education as he was a man of immense knowledge. Other reports identify him as the illegitimate son of Maria Anna of Pouts Newburg, the widow of Charles II of Spain. Other accounts say that he was alive in the time of Jesus Christ and attending the wedding at Cana where the young Jesus would turn water into wine. The Count's legend is so great that he apparently claimed to have received the staff of Moses from one of Moses' great grandsons in Babylon in the time of Cyrus the Great who was the founder of the Persian Empire. This would have been around 530 to 600 BC. Throughout his life he created a confusing web to conceal his real name and origins and used different names depending on the people who he was visiting. However, the name which stuck was the Count of Saint Germain when he courted European royalty and nobility in the 18th century. He would leave the rich and royalty in awe with his vast knowledge of science. He also knew the history of nearly every nation and could recount tales from thousands of years ago as if he was present there. He would play the violin which would move people and leave them in tears. In addition, he spoke French, German, Dutch, Spanish, Portuguese, Russian, English, Chinese, Latin, Arabic, Ancient Greek and was even familiar with Sanskrit. The idea that the Count may have been immortal came to be in 1760 where the Count was visiting Paris that year. The Countess von Georgie had heard that the Count had arrived at the home of Madame de Pompadour, the mistress of King Louis XV of France. The elderly Countess was questioning this as she had met the Count while in Venice in 1710, some 50 years ago. When she met the Count again, she was flabbergasted to see that he hadn't aged a day and she proceeded to ask him if it was his father that she had met in Venice. The Count replied, No Madame, I myself was living in Venice at the beginning of this century. I had the honour to pay you court then. The elderly Countess then replied, Forgive me, but that is impossible. The Count I knew in those days was at least 45 years old, and you from the outside, at that age at present, Madame, I am very old he said with a mysterious smile. But then you must be a hundred years old, said the Countess. The Count then replied, that is not impossible. The Count then provided details of their previous meetings and what life was like in Venice 50 years earlier. The Count would travel to England and he would contribute some of his own musical creations to Lin Constanza de Lusa an opera performed at the Haymarket Theatre in London. The Count would then be arrested in London on suspicion of espionage but was released without charge. Horace Walpole, the Earl of Oxford and a writer mentioned the Count in a letter which stated, the other day they seized an odd man who goes by the name of Count Sir Germain. He has been here these two years and will not tell who he is or where he comes from. He sings, plays the violin wonderfully, 
composes is mad and not very sensible. They call him an Italian, a Spaniard, a Pole, a somebody that married a great fortune in Mexico and ran away with her jewels to Constantinople. The Prince of Wales has grown very curious about him, but in vain. He was too great a musician to not have been famous. The Count is then described as pale, with extremely black hair and a beard. He also dressed magnificently and had several jewels, even his shoes were studded with them. The Count then appeared in the French court around 1748 and was employed by Louis XV for diplomatic missions. The Count would dine with Giacomo Casanova and would be described in his memoirs. The memoirs detailed their first meeting in Paris in 1757. He wrote, The most enjoyable dinner I had was with Madame de Robert Herchi, who came with a famous adventurer known by the name of the Count of Saint Germain. This individual, instead of eating, talked from the beginning of the meal to the end. I listened to him with the greatest attention. It may be said that as a conversationalist, he was unequalled. He was a scholar, linguist, musician, and chemist, good looking and a perfect ladies man. He gave them cosmetics and flattered them. This extraordinary man, intended by nature to be the king of impostors, would say in an easy assured manner that he was 300 years old, that he knew the secret to universal medicine, that he possessed a mastery over nature, that he could melt diamonds, professing himself capable of forming out of 10 or 12 small diamonds, one large one of the finest water without any loss of weight. All of this, he said, was a mere trifle to him. Notwithstanding of his barefaced lies, I thought he was an astonishing man. In 1762, the Count would then travel to Russia, where he allegedly was involved in Catherine the Great's ascension to the throne. Under her rule, Russia grew larger its culture was revitalized and it was recognized as one of the great powers worldwide. In 1774, the Count would return to France when Louis XVI occupied the throne. He warned them of a revolution that would come to pass 15 years later. He was next seen in 1779 where the Count arrived in Altona, a borough of Hamburg. He met up with the Prince Charles of hesse cassel who had a great interest in secret societies. The Count showed the Prince several of his gems and told him he knew a better method to colour cloth. The Prince was impressed with the Count and would let him work in the laboratory and would supply him with materials so he could proceed with the project. The Count and Prince would create jewellery together and the Prince would recount that he was the only person the Count trusted. He told the Prince that he was the son of a Transylvanian Prince, Francis Rakosi, and that he had been 88 years old when he arrived in Altona. The Count was recorded to have died in his residence in the laboratory on the 27th of February, 1784. He was buried the next day in a private grave in Nikolai Church in Eckenford. Now, for any ordinary man, that would have been the end of the story, but not for the Count. There have been many recorded sightings and meetings with the Count up to this day. Official records of Freemasonry show that they chose the Count as their representative for a convention in 1785. Oddly enough, in 1821, the Comtesse d'Ademer, who was a French court official, and memoir writer recounted a conversation she had with the Count. I have seen Saint Germain again, each time to my amazement. I saw him when the Queen was murdered and on the eve of the murder of the Duke de Berry. The last time I saw him was in 1820. Each time he looked to be a man no older than in his mid forties. After, in 1821, the Count would take on another identity. A man named 
Albert Vandam wrote in his memoirs that he met someone that looked just like the Count of Saint Germain. He wrote, He called himself Major Fraser, lived alone and never alluded to his family. Moreover, he was lavish with money, though the source of his fortune remained a mystery to everyone. He possessed marvellous knowledge of all the countries in Europe at all periods. His memory was absolutely incredible and curiously enough, he said he acquired his learning elsewhere than from books. Major Fraser would then disappear without a trace and never be seen or heard from again. In 1870, Napoleon was so interested in the undying count that he would put a commission together to collect information about him. The commission was stationed at the Hotel de Ville. Just one year later, a mysterious fire would break out, destroying all the information regarding the Count. In later years, many other people would come forward and would claim to have met the Count. Everyone who came into contact with this man realized he was not ordinary. Some thought he was a liar. Others thought he was an extraordinary man with the wisdom of a man who had lived many lifetimes. Who was the Count? Was he the son of a Transylvanian prince? And did he really die? Why do people still have claimed to have seen the Count? And why does his name appear in records after his death? Is this man truly immortal, changing his name each century? He is certainly the most mysterious person I have ever read about. Tell me what you think in the comment section down below and make sure to like, subscribe and share the video and have a great day, bye.